I ranked every Sith in Star Wars from absolute worst to absolute best. And in this video, I'm going to go over all of them. Starting with the least impressive Sith in Star Wars, who at the number 10 spot is no one other than Reba from the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV show. And I know that some of you might be in the comments right now saying things like, well, actually, Reba isn't a Sith. She's only an Inquisitor. And you know what? Fair enough. When I say Sith, I'm using it loosely. And I basically mean a dark side user. Because even though a Sith isn't the same as someone who merely utilizes the dark side of the Force, there aren't actually that many true Sith in Star Wars cinema. Like, if I were to actually use the term Sith literally, then I couldn't even put Darth Maul on this list, because technically, his Sithhood was revoked, and there was no shot that I'm not putting Darth Maul on here. I mean, come on. So in this video, I'm basically going to be ranking every dark side user who's a major character in Star Wars, like Count Dooku, Savage Opress, and many more. I hope that makes sense. And now, let me explain why Reva is at the number 10 spot on my list. The biggest reason for this is that for every single other Sith on this list, I can think of something good about them. Just at least one thing that was done right. But for Reva, I simply can't think of anything. I mean, I guess Moses Ingram was a good actress, and she did portray Reva pretty well, but when it comes to the actual character in the show, she was just awful. For starters, the show tried to make her a character with a deep moral struggle, but in reality, it was just confusing. Like, she wants to get close to Vader to take revenge on him for what he did to her, so along the way, she becomes his most vicious lapdog, inflicting terrible evil on other innocent people in the name of the Empire. Then she fails to kill Darth Vader, but decides to go murder baby Luke Skywalker anyway because... Yeah, that's about as much information as the show gives us. Throughout the entire series, Reva was just entirely uncompelling, and in my opinion, way too big of a part of a show that was supposed to be about Obi-Wan. By far the best thing she did in the entire Kenobi show was exemplify how bad donkey Darth Vader is, because in his duel with her, he beat her like a drum, and it was not even close. But all in all, in my opinion, by far the worst dark side user in Star Wars, and thoroughly deserving of the number 10 spot. Up next at number 9 is the biggest letdown in maybe the entire franchise, and that was Supreme Leader Snoke. In The Force Awakens, I gotta admit, I had high hopes for Snoke. I really did. He was big and tall and scary, and he seemed so powerful. I truly thought that he would be the big bad villain for the sequel trilogy, and honestly, I was all for it. Fast forward to The Last Jedi, and Snoke is maybe a little smaller, a little less intimidating than I may have hoped, but that's okay. He's still so powerful. I mean, the way he zapped Kylo Ren like a bug and turned Rey into Raggedy Ann actually made him seem like a real threat. And then, bam, out of nowhere, he collapsed like me after drinking a little too much of that chocolate milk. They always told me to take it easy on that stuff, and I should have listened. I should have listened. Just like that, the one thing that could have made the sequels a little better was gone. Now we are left with no big villain and no being powerful enough to pose an actual threat to Rey. What a letdown. You know what? Slow clap. Let's hear it for Ryan Johnson. He really subverted our expectations. We appreciate you so much, Ryan. Anyway, with that out of the way, on to number eight. And number eight is the one and only Savage Opress. Initially, Savage was a really cool character. I mean, that whole plot with him and his brother was really interesting. And then we had that whole plot of him betraying both Ventures and Dooku and going to find Darth Maul, which was sick. But unfortunately, after that, Savage just became Darth Maul 2.0. For the rest of the show, he just becomes a one-man army, which was cool in its own way, but he lost all the character development that he could have had along the way. A real shame, but I will admit that any duel he's in is so fun to watch, and especially that one on Mandalore with Savage and Maul against Palpatine. That was a great one, truly a classic. Anyway, I think that just about covers it, and now on to number 7, who is no one other than the Grand Inquisitor. The Grand Inquisitor is interesting because he was the only real villain for like one season of Rebels, and then he died, but I gotta say, he wasn't too bad. He was a little one-dimensional, and I can't stand his lightsaber, but he was really fun to watch in a lightsaber fight, and he was a good initial villain for Ezra and Kanan. However, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that he looked so bad in Kenobi, it wasn't even funny. Like, they didn't even try to enlarge his head, and they literally made his species before in live action. Why didn't they just do that again? Also, I remember watching him get stabbed by Reva in like the second episode of Kenobi, I think, and at the time, I was kind of shocked that he lived. But looking back, we've had, what, five people get stabbed through the gut with a lightsaber and walk away fine with like a day and a half of recovery? Way to go, guys. It really makes the most legendary weapon to ever exist in sci-fi feel so much more powerful. Ah, well, it's time to move on to number six, and we're not done yet. It's Kylo Ren. But actually, that reminds me. Hello there, everybody. My name is Jedward, and I make tons of videos about Star Wars and other franchises like it. And if you're enjoying the video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you'd smash that subscribe button. Thank you, it would mean the world to me. And now, on to Kylo Ren. Alright, now, I've heard a lot of people say that Kylo Ren was their favorite part of the sequels. And while I think that he had a lot of problems, mostly in his wishy-washy, indecisive character, I will admit that there were some things about him that I really liked. On the surface, he actually just looked so cool, and his helmet was really sick, especially when he made those fiery burns on it in The Rise of Skywalker. It really brought the whole thing together. Also, I actually think that his lightsaber is so epic. Like, the overall design is awesome 
awesome. But the unstable blade makes it so much better. Like, so much better. Finally, Kylo Ren was a pretty cool, evil, intimidating villain back in The Force Awakens, and you could tell that he was supposed to be respected and powerful. But unfortunately, his whole character fell apart after that. The sequels had zero idea of what to do with him, so he became a wishy-washy character who did random things, and whose entire arc as a character was confusing, hard to follow, and sometimes laughable. Like, I think him walking out of that wave in The Rise of Skywalker was supposed to be a cool boss moment, but with his hair plastered to his forehead and a face like he had just smelled a rancid fart, I busted out laughing when I first saw it. I can't even lie. The sad part is that Kylo had a real potential, and if the sequels weren't as botched as they were, he could have actually been good, but unfortunately, he doesn't even make the halfway mark on my list. However, since we did just make it to the middle of the list and we have five characters remaining, let me just say that this is where the Sith really get good, and everyone coming up is just straight up awesome. And at number five, we have the hairless harpy herself, Asajj Ventress. Throughout the entire Clone Wars show, Ventress had a great arc. First as a simple assassin for Dooku, then onto a bounty hunter, and then, well, we don't really know what she did next. But who thinks that she's going to show up in the Ahsoka show? I mean, as I write this script, episode four of that is dropping tonight, so maybe we'll see her return, which would be kind of sick, not going to lie. Anyway, Ventress is also great in a fight, and she's so fun to watch duel with her two curved hilt red lightsabers, which I just straight up love. The one criticism that I really have is that Ventress is really not rocking the shaved head look, and I guess she and Doja Cat have that in common now, but I digress. And now on to number four. Again, choose Choosing between these last four was a real toughie, and they could have gone any way, I truly mean that. But at number four, I have to put the man, the myth, the legend himself, Darth Maul. Now, when he was in The Phantom Menace, Maul had exactly one thing going for him, and that was his epic lightsaber duel with Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn. Other than that, he said like 30 words in the entire movie, and just kind of stood around when he was on screen. But the real magic of Darth Maul lies in the Clone Wars TV show. In the Clone Wars, Maul was a different level of beast, absolutely destroying anyone who got in his way, and just overachieving in every area possible. Just to put it in perspective, he went from freezing to death in the middle of space to the King of Mandalore in like 36 hours. And if that doesn't tell you how impressive he is, then nothing else really will. I'm sorry to break it to you. Also, he was done so well in the final season of Clone Wars during the Siege of Mandalore, when he knows that Palpatine is going to take over, and he just drops tiny hints to Ahsoka here and there throughout the series. Oh, and that duel with Ahsoka in the third or final episode of season 7? Ooh, that was a masterpiece if I ever saw one. I mean, truly, a chef's kiss. They actually motion captured the entire thing in real life and then animated it so that it had the sense of weight and impact behind it that isn't in almost any other animated lightsaber duel. And finally, they gave him an absolutely beautiful ending in Rebels, with his lifelong enemy holding him in his arms. Anyway, entering the top three now, we have the smartest man in the galaxy, the man who was solely responsible for turning the Republic into the Empire over the course of decades. And that man, of course, was Darth Sidious. Now, I don't know you, and I don't know anything about you, but if you're like me, and you probably are if you're watching this video, you're probably thinking to yourself, Jedward, you resilient rapscallion, the number three spot is pretty good, but don't you think that the Darth Sidious deserves a little higher? Maybe number two, or even number one on a good day. And the answer to that question, my wonderfully curious viewer who I know is subscribed, is that Sidious would have been higher if and only if the Star Wars sequels hadn't existed. Because I'm sure you're aware that in The Rise of Skywalker, Darth Sidious was brought back and butchered in perhaps the most foolish move ever performed by Disney, which is saying something, believe me. So because of that, he averages out to number three. However, the reason he is still so high on the list despite his sequel appearance is because of how simply phenomenal he was in the first six Star Wars movies. He was incredibly powerful, popping off in every duel that he was a part of, and almost never losing any physical confrontation. He was so deviously smart, which you can tell based on how he literally toppled a Republic that had been standing for thousands of years, and right under the very noses of the Jedi. And finally, he was just pure evil, which was exactly what he needed as a character. I mean, it was so nice that we as an audience weren't spoon-fed some sob story about how he was traumatized as a kid, and how he was bullied, and how he was trying to make the galaxy better under his rule. None of that. He is evil through and through. He will do anything for power, he will betray and kill anyone who stands in his way, and he will let nothing and no one stop him whatsoever. Just pure evil. You gotta love him, except for when he came back in the sequels, but the less said about that, the better. Anyway, now we're moving on into the top two, and you probably know who these next two are, so the only question is what order are they in? And the answer to that is that at the number two spot, we have Darth Tyrannus, otherwise known as Count Dooku. And if you've ever watched a Jared video before, then you know that I simply love this man, and I'm really seriously considering making a full video explaining why I 
I think he's so great. So let me know if you'd watch that. But the reason that he's at the number two spot is for a couple different reasons. First of all, the only reason that Dooku became a Sith in the first place is because number one, he was angry at the direction that the Jedi Order was going in and he wanted no part of it. And number two, because as a scholar, he wanted a deeper understanding of the Force. And let's just say that he got that deeper understanding. He was immensely powerful and he was one of the few Sith who knew how to utilize Force Lightning along with many other impressive skills and abilities. And as for the lightsaber combat, buddy, don't even get me started on that. First of all, his lightsaber itself is the singular best lightsaber in Star Wars, and I think that the curved hill is just so cool and classy. Second, Dooku as a swordsman is just so impressive with it, and he's so elegant and classy, and I love watching any duel that he's a part of. What a legend. And with that being said, we're moving on to the number one spot on this list. I'm sure all of you watching knew exactly who it was going to be when you clicked on this video, and you weren't wrong. You know him, you love him, and coming in with his own unique, awesome theme, you don't know the power of the dark side. It's Darth Vader. Literally everyone alive loves this man and he is a staple for the Star Wars franchise as a whole. With his deep story, epic appearance, and sick lightsaber duels, he's incredible to watch. He's so powerful and what's actually so cool is that because he used to be a Jedi, he's also ranked in this video of mine that you need to watch where I ranked every Jedi in Star Wars from absolute worst to absolute best. Be sure to watch it right this instant because you'll really like it, I promise. 